So you're trying to figure out how to make a card scraper work, and no matter how much you try it, it's just it's not doing what you want it to do. And setting up a smoothing plane to really get that buttery, fine, smooth surface at the very end, especially if any grain is going in different directions, is, is an absolute pain. So what's your answer? Um, honestly, a lot of it may actually end up being a, a Stanley 80 or 81. Uh, this is a great old uh, scraping plane, basically. And I just want to go through some of the, uh, the differences about what this is and where it works and uh, how to use it. Uh, some of the ideas, a card scraper is great for working in tough grain, figured grain, anywhere the grain dives and weaves. Uh, this doesn't care about it. You know, as long as you are generally going with the grain, um, you'll get a fairly nice clean curl with this. The problem is it, it always leaves the surface a little bit pilly. Um, it doesn't actually give you, you know, that, uh, that glass surface that you, you think about when you think about a, a perfectly finished surface. Whereas a plane, because it has this massive sole uh, underneath it, um, dragging in front and in back of it, the, the plane will almost burnish the surface to be a really nice, smooth, glassy uh, finish. It's one of the reasons why um, smoothing planes made of wood will often burnish the, the, the surface to actually be a really nice sheen. Uh, the wood on wood action tends to have a little bit better. And then the, uh, the Stanley number 80 or the 81 um, have a bit of a sole, um, but not a whole lot. And uh, so they do do a little bit of burnishing, but they cut like a card scraper. So they don't worry about the grain. You can go with the grain or against the grain. Um, and you also get a little bit of a burnishing action from the sole. So it's kind of a, a back and forth. Um, some people actually use this as a finisher, the very last thing to touch the wood. Um, some people will use this um, to get it very close and then go over it with like a 300 grit sandpaper. Um, and a lot of other people just use this for almost a dimensioning tool um, in taking off rough spots, like if you join together two boards on a panel um, to make that seam perfect between the two, or removing glue. Uh, this has no problem with glue. It will cut right through it and not think anything of it. So it's great for running down those seams and bringing those out to true. So let me show you what it basically does. So with a card scraper, you can go against the grain and you're always trying to find that right angle to get that curl and eventually you can and you can go with the grain against the grain um, like here the grain is switching and it ends up with a fairly nice surface there uh, the problem is just learning it and figuring out how to roll that burr um, can sometimes be an issue whereas if you get a smoothing plane and you set it up just right uh, most of the time if you're careful you can go against the grain but every now and then it's going to snag something and cause you a bit of issue. But the nice thing is with that sole, it burnishes the surface really nicely and you end up with this glass smooth finish. With a uh, Stanley 80 or 81, um, it basically ends up being a card scraper, but this holds it in place. And so you can just do it like that. And you get those same curls that you get from a scraper, not having to worry about how you hold it. So you end up with a, a surface that's about halfway between these two and uh, can clean it up. Other things that it's great for is when you have finish on a board, like this is a, um, a, I think it's a lacquer finish, but with this, I get this beautiful shaving of basically nothing but lacquer. And it comes right off just like that. So if I ever want to take the finish off the surface, How long would it have taken you to sand that? <laughs> um, that is a, a great, uh, great tool for this. And I had a friend recently um, do his floor and found the a scraper worked really well. And if I had thought about it, I would have said, you know, Stanley in 80 or 81 would be fantastic. And just so you know, the difference between an 80 and an 81, um, the 81 also has a, a taller neck for holding on to the scraper, um, but the big thing is that it has a wooden sole. So you get that wood to wood burnishing, um, giving you a little bit smoother surface with an 81, whereas the 80 is just all metal. So let's break this thing down and take a look at it. Number one, you have a tensioning screw here that basically flexes the plate. Just like when you're pushing a scraper, you're using your thumbs to flex it, that screw is your thumbs inside basically grabbing that plate and pushing on it. So we'll loosen that up. And then these two on the back just hold a bracket in place. 
and I get to loosen them. And that holds this scraper in place. Now, this scraper um, initially would have been a little bit larger, um, and it, over the time it has worked down, but you can get these, um, because you're only using a little bit down there, you could work this all the way down to about an inch, and it would still work out well. One of the other things about this is rather than having a square edge here, like you would have on a standard scraper, this has a 45 degree edge. Because the plate is a little bit thicker, it is very, very hard to bend. Um, it, making that 45 degree edge will actually give you uh, a bit of a, a flatter or a smaller surface here, uh, making the burr easier to turn. Here you can see how there is basically this 45 degree edge um, right here coming back to here and you're still going to have a little bit of a burr going that way. So this is the leading edge and this is the trailing edge of your cut. So now let's look at how I would go about uh, sharpening this. Now some people would use a jig and you can use this because um, it can go all the way to 45 degrees um, but that's not really not really not necessary because the angle on this is not drastically important. Uh, 45 degrees is good, but some people do more, some people do less. And I like to do it by hand because it's faster and simpler. And once you do it one or two times, it uh, goes by pretty quickly. So uh, this one is already flattened on the back. I would just uh, coarse, medium, and fine. I would just flatten one side, then make it a little bit more and a little bit more until I get a, a fairly nice polish on it. I'm not looking for anything drastically, you know, going into the, the thousands of grit. Um, I just want to get a nice smooth surface. The other thing I'm looking for is making sure that edge is perfectly flat. And sometimes I will take a file and float all the way across that edge uh, to make sure that that is flat. Uh, but as long as I check it occasionally, I'll, I'll see that it stays uh, within tolerances. So once I polish the back of this, I will hold it on here and go, mm, that's about 45 degrees, and I just try and keep my fingers down towards the point. Just about that much, and I'll make sure that I'm getting the uh, scratches all the way across. Go on to the next one. Same thing. and finish it up on the fine. Now I'll end up with a, a generally sharp edge. I don't need that to be terribly sharp uh, because I'm going to roll a burr on it. Now some people will use it just like that and you can probably get away with that without anything. Um, especially if you're doing any rough work, that's fine. It'll give you a, a fairly coarse cut. But I like to take my burnisher at that 45 degree angle and push it across just by hand. And I'll feel if I have a burr Starting to get it. There we go. Nice little fine burr right on the edge. So then to install this, um, it's kind of counterintuitive if you're thinking about a plane. Usually you're thinking about the angle, this being the leading edge of the, the cutter. But because it's a scraper, this is the leading edge. So this is the front of the plane. Also, I want the bevel to be away from the front because I'm scraping. I want the bevel to be on the back. Uh, so bevel towards the, uh, towards the frame and I'm going to slide it in here. And you can sharpen both sides. So once one side gets dull, you can just flip it over and do the other side um, if you have enough cut on there, Oops, that side. But I just slide it in there until it touches the wood. And so it's, it's sitting flat on the wood right now. And I will clamp this and tighten these two nuts. And I like to crank them down pretty good. Then I just tighten this until it touches and we can start working. And right off the bat, I'm getting a little bit, uh, but not much, because it's not very tight. And so what I'll do is tighten this a little bit more, an eighth, uh, third of a turn or so. And there, now I'm getting these curls like that, right out of it. And those are actually a little bit much for what I want on this, and so I'm going to back it off just a hair. And now I'm getting more of these wisps, and that's what I'm looking more for. 
that's more of a, a finish cut for me. I don't know about you guys, but I could do this all day long. And you're just left with this surface that is, yeah, uh, you know, for all intents and purposes, that's ready to stain, finish, and uh, be ready to go. Um, some people will just come and hit that with like a 300 grit, just a pass or two just to get any of the the uh, um, wisps out of it. But uh, you're basically left with a finishing tool right here. So that's about it for the Stanley Number no. 80. Um, it is a, a great tool, and I'm loving to have this uh, in my arsenal. It's uh, just a fun one to use, especially if you have to take any finish off, removing glue. It is absolutely amazing at that. If you're just wanting to get a better scraping without having to learn how to use the scraper, there you go. That's your, your answer right there. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's really kind of a fun one. I love using a number 80 or a number 81. Um, they're just really fun to use. They, they do quick work and uh, they make it very simple. If you have it set up on your shelf, you can just grab it, run it, and be done. Um, great for cleaning up spots and uh, sometimes even getting that, that really nice finish uh, when you have a lot of reversing grain um, or, or things that are just uh, ornate and crotch grain. This is fantastic. It will cut right through it and it will make a nice smooth surface. Whereas with a plane, you might be able to get away with it or you might end up with tear out that's going to just drive you bonkers to try and get rid of. So that's a, a fantastic solution. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit like and think about subscribing. I'd love to say a huge uh, thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are absolutely awesome and an amazing encouragement to me. So thank you for what you do. If you did like the video, uh, you might end up liking one of the other videos I have around here. Feel free to check one of those out. And until next time, have a wonderful day.